Have you ever wanted to follow along with the actual UX and UI design process of a project? I mean, tons of videos walk you through the process of building a UI from scratch, but unlike all of those, I want to focus on the raw and uncut design process. So in today's video, we'll create a fictional project and the design won't be based on any trend, but rather centered around solving the user experience issues. You'll learn which skills that matter and how you apply them to turn a project brief into final design mockups. We'll be using all kinds of design methods, Figma techniques like auto layout, building components, doing rapid user testing, and documenting and organizing the Figma document for handoff to developers. Let's go. For the sake of this video, we'll use a fictional company and project to help demonstrate my design process. We'll call the company Scale. Their intent is to be the number one finance growth and management tool for small companies. They want to create an MVP release of their service. MVP stands for Minimal Viable Product and is usually the first launch of a product. It has a number of features appealing enough for new users that help validate the idea of a product before scaling it. It's common for companies to release an MVP as a way to test the market before pouring all resources and investment on an idea that hasn't been getting enough feedback or validation yet. So as part of this MVP for this scale platform, we will include a responsive dashboard design that will help users get an overview of all of the features and areas of the platform. For this episode of the video series, we'll cover the very first steps that you should take as a designer when diving into a new project. My process in the beginning is pretty much the same for any project that I work on. As I mentioned in the video linked here above, I streamline my design process by following a UX focused checklist that I created in order to make better design decisions. If you haven't seen that video yet, just click on the link above. There's also a free Figma file of the UX focus checklist link below that you can use in your projects. A wise man once told me, God gave you two ears and one mouth for a reason. I use that advice to guide me through everything in life. And it's definitely the one that should guide the choices you make as a designer too. If it's your first time working on a project for a client, ensure that you understand the goal and the vision that the client has for the company and the pain points that they're currently facing. Dig into and understand the users, the business, and the engineers building the platform. There are a lot of exercises and workshops that you could facilitate in order to reveal some valuable insights on all of these matters. For a project like this, I would start off by running an OKR workshop with my product team. Objectives and key results. It's a goal setting methodology that helps align the team towards the same vision. It helps you bring clarity and focus on what to build and why. There are tons of templates and information on this. I've added an OKR Fig Jam template in the description below for you to use. And secondly, I would arrange the interviews with the potential user group or actual users if they are available. Understand who they are and define their pain points and goals and ambitions. And in order to get users to use a product or service, you have to sort of design the experience that triggers the intended user behavior. This will help you understand what drives a certain user behavior. We have to understand what helps motivate them and what their abilities actually are. You could ask questions that help you dig into the psychology behind their behavior. Are they motivated by the need for some kind of belonging, a sensation, anticipation, or any kind of hope? And in regards to their ability, look into what they're limited by. Are they short on time, money, capacity, whether it's mental or physical or just the lack of habit? For this project, let's assume that we have picked up some insights from running a few user interviews, group discussions, and an OKR workshop with the team. From the fictional user interviews, we can pretend that we have the following insights. They are small business owners motivated by high anticipation and hope, they are hoping to find a tool that manages their money for them. They're also trying to avoid the pain of dealing with a lot of admin work or the pain of paying a financial advisor to help them grow their money. Based on our research, we also found out that they have very limited time, low mental capacity, 
and lack the habit of budgeting. So in order to drive these users towards actually using the service we want to design, we need to make sure the user experience is designed to give them some kind of value quickly in order to help keep their motivation and hopes up. And of course, make the experience frictionless and easy to use in order to avoid combating their lack of time and mental capacity. This information is key to helping you design the right Thing. Now, besides understanding the user and the business objectives from the OKR workshop, we also want to understand the technical limitations or the opportunities that we have to consider. I usually set up a call with the engineering team to pick their brain a little bit. That way you'll get a good base of knowledge from all of the three key areas before moving into the next step. Now we want to define what we're actually building. I would frame and collect all of the insights into some kind of value proposition, which I feel could be helpful for this project. If you don't know already, a value proposition is a statement that describes why a customer or a user would choose your product, service, or company over any other competitor. Defining this will help you and your team set and align on a direction. Let's summarize some of the key points that we learned by understanding the users and the business so far. We're designing a responsive dashboard experience and UI for our finance app. Its main users will be small company owners and due to the service it offers, it can be a complex tool, but we need a clear overview of all of the core areas of the app in the dashboard overview. And our aim is to help them be better at managing their finances with as little friction as possible. And we understand that the users have a limited mental capacity, so we want to avoid complex navigations or high friction. We want the discoverability in the service to be clear and easy so we could maybe explore some different navigation styles and how to sort the information. We could also bucket the core areas in some kind of widgets or cards in the dashboard interface main view with the intent of summarizing the key data that the user can access at a glance. In order for us to frame all of this and define what we're building, we could ask ourselves the following four questions. Who's the target customer? What are the target needs? What's the product description? and what's the core product value. For the scale platform, we can define the target customer as small companies. The target need is to manage their profits. The product is described as a high level finance and liquidity manager. And the product value is helping to manage and invest profits to grow company liquidity. We can put all of the answers from the last slide, A through D, into a statement or a formula which will set the direction for what we aim to design. For A, that needs to be our product X is a C, that D. Now replace the letters with information from the last slide and we get our value proposition. For small companies that need to manage their profits, our product X, which is scale, is a high level finance and liquidity manager that helps invest and manage profits to grow company liquidity. In the next part of this series, we'll dig into the ideation process. We'll play around with different design directions and I'll show you probably one of the quickest and most efficient ways to design low fidelity wireframes and concepts. Now, before we wrap up, is this process of kicking off a design project any different from what you're already doing today? Let me know in the comments below. Make sure you subscribe, turn on notifications and hit the like button below for more videos like this. See you guys in the next one. Peace.